And this is Joel's first solo, sh solo show with Art Gallery. We're so happy to have him here. Um, this particular show is a, a remarkable combination of the old and the new in that it's, he's combining the ancient art form of encaustics with the modern technology of 3D printing. Um, so here is Joel to tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. I uh, really uh, do appreciate it. So the, the seed of inspiration for this show for me um, happened during a trip to New York to the Museum of, Museum of Modern Art. So I was there on a little ex, uh, ex, expedition to see the Jasper Johns in Caustics. Um, one of the most, uh, probably the famous ones, uh, being the U.S. flag over in Newsprint. So he was the one that kind of revived the uh, encaustics in the 50s. So those were wonderful, and um, you know, although there were you know, five or however many levels of you know, fantastic masterpieces one after the other, the thing that just grabbed my attention and would not let go was you know, nothing on the upper floors, but it was down on the first floor in the gift shop, this 3D doodling kit complete with 3D glasses. I was just consumed over the next days. How how can I incorporate you know some 3D imagery into my artwork? So uh, I started looking into um, stereograms, um, pieces where you have to two images, one you have to look at with your left eye and the other with your right eye, cross-eyed. <laughs> um, if you remember in the 90s or whatever, those laser art things that you just have to blur your eyes at. Um, there was serious, serious consideration for having all of you wearing 3D glasses <laughs> too. <tonight. laughs> at the end of that long uh, episode of research, I finally concluded, no, that's not going to work. So. I kind of went back to my card pieces, particularly the, the face cards, where I was achieving a little bit of 3D um, look with the, the separating the color layers. And you know, although I looked at 3D printers a while ago and kind of had an interest, they were kind of expensive. I looked again, they'd really come down in price. So I went ahead and made the leap and got one. So that was around July, and immediately I was faced by four big problems. Number one, was dealing with its limitations. So you see it's in the back corner printing up some hearts now. So you know it's a single extruder, so that means I can only print one color at a time. And the dimensions are maybe eight inches by eight inches by eight inches. So how do I make things bigger? So how do I uh, slice and dice and uh, reattach as it were? I got that figured out. Um, the next problem was kind of in the software, so it really wasn't developed too well. So a lot of my imagery was in um, uh, Illustrator, so how do I get some of the things I've done earlier that I may want to adapt into the 3D world over uh, the printer. So that uh, was another exercise. So once I got something printed, the next problem was, well, how do I attach it into the artwork? So you know, the, the thermoplastic does not um, bond to encaustic at all. So you know, I looked at that for a while and came across you know, the obvious well, just gluing it down and painting around it. But um, and that works, you'll see that in the, like the hexagons um, and the, the pyramids are all in that fashion. But I wanted some other look, as it were, to you know, maybe do a painting and then attach on the sur surface of that. So that was uh, another little exercise in getting that figured out. Um, I'm happy to say that that process is now a patent pending process. So I, as of Wednesday, I made a submission to uh, the patent office. Um, this goes, goes back to uh, my days in the late 80s working at one of Shell's research centers, so supporting the same computerization of, of, of labs. One particular researcher just gotten a, a massive MRI scanner and he was taking core samples of cylinders of rock and sending it through the, the MRI machine. So I 
went in there one day and he goes, oh, I just got a patent. I go, well, for what? And he said, well, for this bed that keeps the core from rolling off, because it goes to. And I looked at it and I go, to myself, of course, well, it's, that's just some two by fours with notches chopped out of it. You got a patent for that? So that was a little seed that planted. If you get a patent for that, maybe I can do something in my lifetime. So links to this show is uh, kind of culminated with a, uh, we'll see what happens. It probably takes a year for me to figure out if it goes through or not. Then the last problem is, okay, I can print the stuff out. I can attach it to caustics, well, but what do I make? So kind of the seeds for the inspiration for this show. Um, you know, a lot of it went back to uh, some happy times. So. You know, playing the piano, kind of going to the, the violin, um, you know, some fun projects at work that took me around in the country. So you'll see that in the stratogram references. Um, reworking some of my earlier pieces. So the, the gas lamp, for example, that's the gas lamp from my front yard that uh, had a gas leak for a good 10 years until I finally took it apart and you know, we poured the concrete base. We, plumbed it and everything, so I got to know every inch of that, so that was also one of the first exercises I did with Photoshop, was how to uh, you know, take a photo and crop out the house and uh, the yard and everything else that hindered that. Um, and then, it's just my kooky sense of humor on a lot of this, so, you know, paying tribute to the bees that sacrificed their honeycomb, so that got me into the hexagons. Um, the, uh, you know, the pyramids, the Egyptians that kind of uh, you know, formulated the uh, encaustic media. Um, so that's uh, pretty much the inspiration. I didn't get here tonight by myself, so let me do a, a couple thanks. First to uh, Arnold, my husband, for months and months of fun things to stay with. The house is a wreck, the yard, and the gardens have never seen worse. So thanks for putting up with all of that. I want to say special thanks to Manjun Zan of TXRX Labs. She runs, she runs a monthly 3D printing show and tell. So, uh, the TXRX Labs. Uh, I was lucky the first time I went, I was the only one there <laughs> besides her. So, she got to all my undivided attention. Um, she turned me on that night to. Tinkercad, which was essential in unlocking the ability to print a lot of this stuff, and then acetone for cleaning up the, the things that didn't come out quite right. So, if anyone interested in 3D printing, look up uh, the TXRX Lab Show and Tales. Every time I go, I have a, I learn something. So, the, the pyramids you see, they're reducing pyramids. That was a direct takeaway from December. And, you know, first piece of the show that sold, so <laughs> didn't thank you. Um, there's also another 3D uh, meetup group that if you're interested, the 3D print, Houston 3D Printers Interest Group. So they'll go on uh, maybe factory tours they're here tonight looking at 3D printing and art. Um, Matt Adams of the Visual Arts Alliance, uh, particularly the, the regulars in the three and the uh, the third Monday critiques, and finally, I think that's everyone except for the wonderful, wonderful family here at Archway. So I'm just thrilled and delighted to be part of this wonderful group, and it's really it's an epic place to be. And I can't thank you enough for bringing me in and uh, having me uh, execute with all your support the first show here. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to uh, sort of turn off the lights and see if we have any questions. I guess the lights are already up. <laughs> yes? You put, you put all this together since July? The cards were earlier, um, but pretty much. Wow. I looked at some of the artists wow. going, oh my god, I really need to get going. <laughs> so I really try to, it's very disciplined to, uh, to, to I think I was having to fill up 90 feet worth of wall space. So, and a lot of my stuff was the smaller pieces, so this did challenge me as well to, to go a day. Okay?
Yes. But I'm interested in how you got the hard shapes, like the hexagons and the tree branches, and, and also the, the melty stuff under Tchaikovsky. Um, like, do you cut it or mold it or stamp it, or how do you get the plastic polymer to do that? The, this is a different technique, so I work off a pancake griddle with everything molten. For the smooth, you'll do a long brush stroke, you know, getting a smooth effect. The, the bottom is just the same stuff, but more choppy with the maybe colder temperature on it. You just build up, build up, build up, and don't fuse it with a blowtorch to, to melt down as much. Um, these are um, originated in uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, graphics, vector graphics. So I was able to you know, take one. This is the same image for this as well as the, the tree on your left. Just, uh, because it's in that program, I'm able to, to expand the borders to, to kind of fill it up or uh, play with the volume. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming out.